Welcome to Electron Line. Remember in an earlier video we talked about that a net torque causes an angular acceleration. So let's say that this is a net force acting on this particular disc. This disc can rotate about the central point, which is the pivot point, and therefore that force causes a torque which causes an angular acceleration. We're trying to find the magnitude of that angular acceleration. Remember that with a solid disc, the moment of inertia is one half m times r squared. Let's say the radius is 25 centimeters, the mass of this is, disc is 4 kilograms, and the force is equal to 50 newtons. Also remember Newton's second law, where you have F equals ma, which means acceleration is equal to the force divided by the mass. Well, in rotational motion, we can say that the torque applied is equal to the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. Notice that the torque takes the place of the force, the moment of inertia takes the place of the mass, and the angular acceleration takes the place of the linear acceleration, which means that the angular acceleration is equal to the ratio of the torque divided by the moment of inertia. That means that alpha, the angular acceleration, is equal to the torque divided by the moment of inertia, which is equal to the torque will be equal to the force times the perpendicular distance from the point of rotation to the line of action of the force. That would be the radius of the disc here, so it would be force times the radius of the disc divided by the moment of inertia, which is one half times the mass times the radius squared. Notice that this radius cancels out this radius, the two can go to the numerator, which means that this is twice the force divided by the mass divided by the radius. When we plug in the numbers, we get the following result. This is equal to two times 50 newtons, divided by the mass, which is 4 kilograms, and divided by the radius, which is 0 0.25 meters. We have to convert centimeters to meters. 4 times 0 0.025 is 1, 2 times 50 is 100. This becomes 100, and the units are going to be radians per second squared. Now you may wonder, how did we get radians per second squared out of that? Well, let's go ahead and see. We have newtons divided by kilograms times meters. Notice that newtons is the force that gives one kilogram the acceleration of one meter per second squared. And kilograms, we have the kilograms in the denominator, we have the meters in the denominator. Notice that the kilograms cancel, the meters cancel, and we're left with one over seconds squared. The radians is a non-unit but we put it in anyway to give it clarity that we're showing that we're dealing with angular acceleration. So the magnitude of the angular acceleration is 100 radians per second squared. I did say magnitude, because what about the direction? Well, notice that the force will cause the disc to spin in a clockwise direction, which means we're going to end up with a clockwise torque, which is a negative torque. So in essence, we can say that we're going to get a negative acceleration of 100 radians per second square. So if we're going to take into consideration that it's clockwise, we do have to take care of the negative sign as well. Notice a negative torque would cause a torque into the board, so we get an into the board direction for the torque, and that gives us a negative 100 radians per second square acceleration if we take into account the negative as well. And that's how we do that.